Good evening. We're going to get started in just a minute, please. Good evening. Hi. I just wanted to make a few announcements before we actually start. This is a sold out uh, venue here, and we are in the midst of making more copies. So, uh, Please, please know that there's copies on the way of all the materials as well as a speaker slip. If you're signing in, you will also receive digital copies of all the materials that are handed out this evening. So please ensure that you sign in and have a, a legible email address that we can forward digital copies of all the materials to you. If you are going to fill out a speaker slip, I also encourage you to please write legibly and clearly so that we have an understanding of what your question is. Thank you. OK, so I'm just going to wait for two more people to take their seats, and then we'll start. We're running a little bit late. So thank you all for joining us this evening. It's Tuesday night. Appreciate you coming out on an evening. Uh, we are recording this meeting, so it will be available on the website for everybody. The camera in the back, you can all wave, uh, will be essentially televising the panel. And then as you do come forward for your speaker, uh, for your speaker uh, comments, we're going to be asking you to come to the front. We'll provide you a microphone at that time. So in case you're mistaken, it's, this is the public workshop for the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act, lovingly called SIGMA, and the Groundwater Sustainability Plan, GSP, the development uh, of those plans in the Fox Canyon Groundwater Management Agency. The agenda is here, and it's also in your handouts if you have them. We have the team introductions following th all the way through to public comment. We ask that you please hold public comment and questions until the end of the presentation. Please hang on to those speaker slips, and I will be around to collect those and usher you forward to the microphone. We have a list of acronyms. Oftentimes, we, we have a lot of alphabet soup when we go through these types of presentations. So in your handouts, you also have a list of the common acronyms we will try as much as possible to not refer to them in the acronym category and speak them out. But in case one of us jumps back into our acronym happy place, hopefully you will be able to follow along. Well, we also have a list of terms, stakeholder, groundwater basin, and aquifer are the common terms that we'll be using. Introductions, my name is Jane Gray. I'm a uh, facilitator and a regional planner, and I work with DUDEC. And I will pass the microphone as everyone's going to make an introduction. We're not in order. Um, I'm Claire Koba, a hydrogeologist with DUDEC. And Matt Naftali over here. Oh, thank you. Uh, Matt Naftali, deputy project manager and hydrologist with DUDEC. And I'm uh, Kim Loeb with the Fox Canyon Groundwater Management Agency. Tony Morgan with United Water. I'm the Deputy GM for Groundwater and Water Resources. Good evening. My name is Brian Bondi. I'm the Contract Groundwater Manager for Cayugas Municipal Water District. Hello. My name is Matthew Fienup, and I'm an economist at California Lutheran University. I'm going to turn it over to Kim for his opening remarks. Uh, thanks, Jane. So welcome, everybody, and thank you very much for coming out and your interest in our groundwater. It's a very important topic. So uh, as I mentioned, I'm with the Fox Canyon Groundwater Management Agency who's putting on this uh, workshop. And we're here tonight to learn about the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act, groundwater sustainability plans, and what the Fox Canyon Groundwater Management Agency is about. 
Groundwater is a very critical resource for Ventura County. Wells pumping, groundwater supply, most of the water for agriculture, as well as uh, a very important source of drinking water. But we've been using more than is sustainably available for a long time, resulting in declining water levels. Seawater has been flowing in from the ocean and contaminating aquifers along the coast. And the ongoing drought has worsened these problems. Uh, the Fox Canyon GMA has been regulating groundwater pumping for the past 30 years, um, which has certainly helped, but more work needs to be done clearly. So we're currently working on to develop new strategies to sustainably manage our groundwater and into the future. And your input is very much um, desired as we develop these plans. So. Um, that's why we're here today, and at this time, I'd like to hand it back to Jane, who's going to be our facilitator for the evening. Thank you very much, Kim. So the purpose of this workshop, uh, there's three purposes of the workshop. Uh, one of them is to inform you all here about the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act of 2014 and uh, how that applies to the Fox Canyon Groundwater Management Agency. Also explain the purpose of the groundwater sustainability plans and what that means. Uh, but both for the four basins, the process, the timeline, and the opportunities for your continued involvement. And we are here, although this is heavy on the speaking right now, but ultimately with little mouths and big ears to get your feedback and your comments. So we are going to have our ears wide open, uh, and the latter half of this is going to be devoted for uh, time to you to ask uh, and get clarifications and comments on the process. So the Fox Canyon Groundwater Management Agency. So Fox Canyon Groundwater Management Agency was established in 1982 by the California legislature in response to the ocean, the seawater intruding the aquifers along the coast. And the uh, GMA, as we call it, has been regulating groundwater pumping from that time since that time. It's a California special district and it has five board members. Um, Steve Bennett, supervisor from Ventura County. David Borcher, who rec uh, represents farming interests. Charlotte Craven, city councilwoman from uh, Camarillo, represents the five cities within the GMA. Lynn Molhart, who's the chair, uh, is from United Water Conservation District. And then Gene West represents the small water districts within the GMA boundaries. If you could, so, oh, the colors are funny, aren't they? Um, so this represents the four groundwater basins that are uh, covered by the Fox Canyon GMA. And in your packet, and we're getting more for those folks who didn't get them, is a map that shows those basins and also shows the cities so you can kind of see where you um, where you are in relation to the uh, basins and the Fox Canyon groundwater management agency boundaries but includes the cities of Camrio, Moore Park, Oxnard, Port Wainemi and many communities uh, throughout the the area there. Three of the basins within the Fox Canyon have been designated high priority basins because of uh, over pumping and overdraft by the state and two of those have been designated as critically overdrafted and so uh, that's that's why we're here and that's why we have uh, work to do thank you Kim so what is Sigma Sigma as uh, we've already stated is the sustainable groundwater management act of 2014 came into effect in 2015. And it essentially is a new state law, a relatively new state law, that provides for local agency control over groundwater resources. The purpose is a collaborative effort towards local control. And clearly, the GMA has been doing that work for the better part of 30 years. So you all are ahead of the curve in terms of getting through the first hurdle which you don't need to do, which is GSA formation under Sigma, and you can head right into GSP, which is the Groundwater Sustainability Plan. Under 
sigma, sustainability is defined as the avoidance of significant and unreasonable results. The significant and unreasonable aspect of this definition is defined locally. So Fox Canyon GMA is defining what that means in the context of this basin with these users. And the categories of undesirable results that Sigma is attempting to, and ultimately the GSPs and the GSA, excuse me, the GMA, in this case will do, is avoid chronic, ring, chronic lowering of groundwater levels, reduction in groundwater storage, seawater intrusion, degradation of water quality, land subsidence, depletions of surface waters which are connected to groundwater. And these are all present in varying degrees within the GMA already. So how does Sigma apply to the Fox Canyon Groundwater Management Agency? You've already defined that you're head of the curve, you've been doing a lot of this work for the past 30 years, but why does it apply to you? Well, th the application of it is within the GSP. And so that's really what we're here to talk to tonight. And the topic uh, that we are going to be digging into detail on as we move forward through this presentation is the Groundwater Sustainability Plan. Uh, and the sustainability goals that are outlined by the GMA must be achieved by 2014, excuse me, 2042. Groundwater sustainability plans, in this case for the GMA, um, means a technical document, just like any planning document. It's a technical document, particularly related to groundwater in this situation, obviously. And it takes into account the hydrogeologic conditions of the aquifer and the aquifers within the GMA's authority the groundwater balance of outflows and inflows, and the historical and projected demands of each water basin. So there's a lot of work that is ongoing uh, on these topics. We also include estimations of sustainable yields, measurable objectives and milestones of sustainability, and a monitoring and management plan, obviously, which is the implementation piece of all this. So you can see that these are very data-rich, intensive documents. Uh, and so the work that the GMA has been doing over the number of decades to this point is going to inform the overall sustainability uh, of the basins. Uh, and you have a lot of good work to draw on. So who's involved in the GSP development? Fox Canyon GMA staff, the consultant team, which is DUDEC, the local experts uh, on the Technical Advisory Committee, and we have a representative here from the Tec Technical Advisory Committee uh, this evening, or excuse me, the group, Technical Advisory Group, the charter groups, and then the public. So this is where you come in. So throughout this whole process, the GMA and the GSB development is based on a public process. And so we're asking you to participate in this process, not only through this workshop, but we're collecting your information and we will be providing you with updates as we move through the process. The GMA is a public agency. There's meetings every week in the, stair, in the room upstairs. Those are also televised uh, and we're certainly happy to make you aware of those if you're not made aware already, but that's where the business of the GMA is conducted. And charter groups, I will turn it over to the panel to address the charter groups. Um, by way of short introduction, I'm, I'm Claire Koba from DUDEC again. Um, there are three uh, charter groups currently in existence. These are groups which were formed by the board of directors, thank you, um, of, of the Fox Canyon GMA, specifically to represent um, the interests of a specific group of stakeholders or to provide uh, technical expertise. And the three of them are, are listed here. We have the technical advisory group, which we refer to as TAG, the Las Posas users group, or affectionately referred to as LPUG, which uh, is specific to that Las Posas basin on your map, and then the water market group, which is doing some work that will apply likely to all the basins. Um, we also, there, there are plans to create a fourth charter group for the geographic region that encompasses the Oxnard and Pleasant Valley basins, um, and that is expected to be formed uh, toward the beginning of, of next year. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to our three charter group representatives. Again, thanks for coming out on a Tuesday night. Appreciate you uh, giving up some of your evening. Uh, the technical advisory group, as they mentioned, was formed by the GMA board to provide a group of technical experts for which the 
staff and the GSP consultant could come to for input, guidance, advice, just general technical discussions as the GSP was being developed. So this was a group that was formed early on in the process as the GSP was, was getting ready to start. So it's composed of seven members. Good, they're up there. Uh, seven members, five of which were appointed by the GMA directors, the GMA board, one member at large, and one member from an NGO. So we've got someone from the Nature Conservancy and then several other technical experts to round out the program here. So these people are experienced folks. They have, uh, in many cases, some, um, as we call it, sun highlights in their hair, a little, a little gray hair there. Um, they've been around the, the block a few times, and so they're providing some guidance and advice along the way as the GSP process uh, evolves. Again, their role is advisory. They're not writing the GSP. Um, they're serving to provide advice, uh, do recommendations. Some of the, if you come to some of the meetings, the discussions are oftentimes technical, um, maybe overly technical at times. But the idea is to get a group of technical experts in a room, have the consultant talk about an issue or a problem, a concern, or, hey, we just need to talk to you guys about how would we analyze this particular situation? Give me some ideas and feedback. And so that's largely our, our role. We review draft sections of reports, provide comment, um, advice, and um, generally serve as a resource for the staff, the board, and the GSP consultant. Right. Thank you, Tony. Uh, again, my name is Brian Bondi. Um, I wear a couple hats. I'm part of the technical advisory group, and I have a few streaks of gray coming in. It's, it's coming. Tony. It's <laughs> I'm great. Yeah, this process may bring a few more, but um, anyhow, it's part of the job. Um, I'm here tonight to talk about the Las Posas Valley Basin Groundwater Users Group. Uh, this is a stakeholder group that uh, has been meeting for quite a number of years, certainly well before Sigma, uh, just as a grassroots ad hoc sort of group to talk about groundwater issues impacting the basin. And the primary focus of the group is to try and have a little bit of self-determination in terms of groundwater management. Um, certainly the group has no authority to manage groundwater. Um, but an outcome of what we do is try to advocate uh, for sound groundwater management policies. And so we send a lot of recommendations to the GMA. Um, last year, our role was uh, formalized uh, under the GMA through this charter process that they've created. And we were given a very specific task, actually two tasks. Uh, one was to come up with a methodology for sharing the available groundwater resources in the basin. In other words, determine how groundwater will be allocated to different well owners in their wells for implementation under Sigma. And that's a process that uh, is fairly mature. We uh, have a program that's been proposed to the GMA and we're moving forward with working through the details with the GMA staff and hopefully ultimately uh, approval by the GMA board. The other uh, aspect of the GSP that uh, we're working on is studying uh, options for replenishing the basin to add more water to make the pie bigger, so to speak. And so this is a joint study that's funded by partially by the GMA as well as Cayugas Municipal Water District. And we're looking at different water supply uh, projects uh, to add, add to the supply. Um, those are the main things we're working on. I think we also have a slide here showing how to get involved. Uh, we do meet monthly, typically the fourth Wednesday of the month at uh, Cayugas Municipal Water District in Thousand Oaks. Generally those meetings are in the morning, 8.30 to 10.30. We have a number of active committees that are working on the details of the allocation planning and the water supply study. They meet on an as-needed basis. Uh, we post all of this information to the website that's shown on the slide. And if you have other questions, you're certainly welcome to contact me. Uh, my email address is shown there. Thanks, Brian. 
Uh, again, my name is Matthew Fienup, uh, and I am an environmental economist from California Lutheran University and also the chair of the Water Market Group. Uh, and so um, the origin of the Water Market Group um, actually, uh, believe it or not, predates Sigma, uh, the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act. So uh, there has been a uh, group of um, agricultural water users known as the Growers Group um, that have been working on um, solutions to groundwater problems in the county, uh, in the GMA for some time. Uh, and so I was fortunate enough to actually attend growers group meetings uh, beginning about two years ago uh, as the GMA was wrestling with uh, emergency ordinance E and um, cuts to groundwater extraction in face of the drought. Um, so. Uh, in terms of water markets, uh, what is, I, I guess it's worth addressing, what is a water market and why do water markets? Um, so uh, the agency uh, is facing significant cuts to groundwater extraction under the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act. Um, you know, we're talking of large in magnitude, you know, 25, 30 or more percent cuts potentially in uh, groundwater extraction. And so, uh, the question among growers in particular was, well, how do we possibly survive? Uh, you know, how do agricultural businesses remain viable in the face of those cuts? And so the idea of a water market um, originated in the growers group, uh, and the primary goal was to think of ways to create flexibility for agricultural water users to adapt to uncertain groundwater supplies in the future. Um, now with Sigma, um, that process has broadened, uh, and the Water Market Group currently has about 50, uh, more than 50 people um, on the Water Market Group, including agricultural water users, uh, the cities in the Oxnard Plain and Pleasant Valley basins, and also uh, we have representation from the Nature Conservancy uh, in that effort. Um, so what is a water market? Um, what we're contemplating uh, is a system for water users to transfer um, groundwater pumping to another water user um, in the basin. And again, the goal here is to first and foremost create flexibility so that water users can adapt to changing water supply. Um, two other really important goals are to create economic returns to conservation, so to create powerful incentives that will drive conservation uh, agency-wide. And then the last one, um, and one of particular interest to some of the cities, is to create incentives and tools which will make uh, investment in new supplies uh, more likely and more feasible. Uh, and so those are the goals of the Water Market Group. Um, so we have now uh, met um, 12, we've had 12 biweekly meetings um, over uh, many months. Uh, there have been more than 40 hours of research and deliberation. Uh, and that is um, everything from reading case studies, um, you know, hearing, listening to stakeholder concerns, uh, hearing presentations from experts who operate water markets in other states in the Western United States and even other countries. Um, Australia has the most, the largest and most robust water markets in the world, uh, and we heard representatives there. And at the end of those deliberations, we've now agreed as a group to a. Uh, um, set of recommendations for the structures and operational mechanisms for a water market. Um, there is some coordination that still needs to happen with the Las Posas users group uh, and their recommendations, and those recommendations will be submitted to the GMA uh, for their consideration. Um, so uh, there's a tremendous amount of work that's been done in this area. Um, the next steps are actually that we're working now on the implementation of a water market pilot. Uh, so the idea is that trading is a very, trading water is a very new idea uh, for Ventura County and for the agency specifically. And so we have decided to proceed very cautiously to start simple and to have a process that um, is adaptive that allows us to learn and refine the rules as we go. And so the next step for us is working on a small water market pilot where we actually implement some of these trading mechanisms and then see what happens, see what the unintended consequences are uh, and respond to those accordingly. Um, if uh, I also want to add that um, uh, part of that water market pilot is also something called an advanced metering pilot. So this is a recommendation from the growers group and I think speaks um, to, the, to the goodwill and innovation of the agricultural 
um, community here in Ventura County. It was the growers that proposed something called an advanced metering, which is a requirement that we actually use um, technology, telemetry, to monitor groundwater extraction um, so that we actually know how much water is coming out of the ground, who's using it. Um, and this was seen by the growers as a prerequisite uh, to trading water. Uh, and so, uh, so first of all, my um, compliments to the growers for proposing this. And the pilot that we're working on is a water market and advanced metering pilot. So there will be technology going in um, early in 2017 where we put um, uh, telemetry on groundwater wells and start actually collecting and monitoring groundwater data in real time. Um, so in terms of public involvement, the water market group is open to the public, uh, and so you're very welcome to join us and learn more about it. Uh, there aren't meetings scheduled currently, uh, but one really important way you can get involved is you can um, view the progress to date. So we have a very rich website uh, that the county helped us set up. It's called the SharePoint County SharePoint site, and it literally shows it's a collection of much of the research that we've done. Um, as well as the latest draft of the rules and regulations um, for the water market. And so you're very welcome to contact me. My email is on um, the slide handouts that you have. Uh, and I'm very happy to add you to that site. That will also put you on our email list so that you're made aware of any future meetings that we hold. Thank you. So materials, if you don't have them, are now in the back. If you need materials, uh, we'd be happy to come around and get them for you, so you don't need to stampede over there all en masse. So please raise your hand if you need some materials, and we'll bring them over. I also want to punctuate uh, with we will, have, hopefully you're all signing in. And while the materials are great, um, we're going to be sending them digitally. We will also be sending everybody's contact information in a live link, so you can just the, right. <laughs> yeah. Right. So um, the contact information uh, printed on the back of one of your handouts of the panel speakers will also be included in the email summary that goes out at the end of um, the week. So you can easily access that information. Um, we also have websites that are part of the presentation. So uh, we also have live links that we will send out in that email summary. So the next steps um, for the GSP are in, in engagement with the public through this process to move through uh, each of the different chapters, all of the technical information that we've discussed uh, in partnership. JUDEC um, will continue to work on it, as will the TAG, the Water Market Group, and the Charter Groups. We will have a, another workshop in the spring, obviously, but in, in the intervening time, we will be giving you uh, monthly summaries of what all of the groups are working on. So you can keep tabs on what is going on. You are also welcome to come to the GMA meetings on a monthly basis. If you have public comments, there's an email listserv that we can add you to. And that is on this slide in your handouts. And again, will be in the email summary on live link so that uh, you're able to access that quickly. Some relevant websites are obviously the GWR websites, Fox Canyon Groundwater Management Agency, Las Posas Users Group, the Technical Advisory Committee. Matthew will send me the link to the water markets, and I'll send that out in that email as well. And as promised, now this is your time in the program. So if you have public comments and questions, um, we encourage you to hold up your speaker slips, please. Uh, Matt Naftali from DUDEC will be coming around to collect those speaker slips. And we'd like to ensure that you have everything answered. Uh, certainly, three minutes is what we ask if there our remaining questions and people still need to continue to dialogue. We're certainly happy at the end of our public comment period to break up on a panelist basis in different sections of the room uh, so groups can, can talk to individual panelists here this evening. 
So do we have speaker slips already up here? Uh, I gave it to Matt. Matt's gone. Okay. And again, the camera's here, so we'll ask you to come up to the front, please. So Jürgen Grabakow. Thank you. I'm Jurgen Gramko, um, here to represent the stakeholder group not listed among the charter groups, which is the Oxnard Pleasant Valley Ag Owners Group, and to a lesser extent, the group of the cities that are in Oxnard and uh, Pleasant Valley. So we have been meeting frequently, on average, every three weeks for about a year. We have addressed um, a broad range of topics associated with groundwater, um, groundwater use, who the rights holders are, and essentially who the real stakeholders are. And from our perspective, the real stakeholders are the landowners and the cities. Those are the water rights holders, and those are the people that are going to be impacted by this. Our meetings have not been open to the public, but they are open to those stakeholders, which are, again, landowners and cities. To the extent there are folks, well, let me, let me back up. The landowners that are involved in the Oxnard Las Poses group represent over 80% of all the land in those two basins. So we have a huge participation rate. The city group represents 100% of all the cities in those two basins. We are meeting privately because we believe that is the most efficient way to negotiate the allocation of rights, first between the cities and the landowners, and ultimately among the landowners themselves. So um, I believe we should have a seat at that table. We don't have a seat at that table because we have not been able to come to agreement on the terms of a charter. One of the things that we require of our ag membership is an assessment to pay for our technical and legal consultants. So if you want to get in the room, you do have to participate in the cost of those advisors. And to the extent there is a threshold uh, opposed to that, those folks aren't in the room. But beyond that, we are a um, very serious stakeholder group that we believe deserves a seat at that table, not at this table. Thank you. I'll let the panel address that question. Um, Thanks, Jürgen. Of course, uh, we definitely recognize and appreciate all the work that the, um, both the agricultural and urban stakeholders are working on the, uh, the well op owners and pumpers within the two basins, Oxnard and Pleasant Valley. And, uh, and this stakeholder group that the GMA is forming is for a broader input of all interested parties that are in those areas that um, want to participate and have a vehicle to comment on the groundwater sustainability plan development for those two basins. And certainly, um, you know, we've, uh, we've spoken and, and you've indicated a, a willingness to be involved. It's very important for the involvement from those two groups and, uh, and feed in that information. And so this is sort of, is really an umbrella group of that, of, of uh, all parties, everybody who lives in that area. And, uh, and so it's not meant to supplant the work that the, uh, the well owners are working on in terms of developing those allocation amongst themselves. That's a very important process of work that they're doing. So are there any other speaker slips? I have one. Other speaker slip? Okay. So Scott Flournoy? Flournoy? Can you, can you correct my pronunciation, please? You got it right the second time. Thank you. Hi, I'm here with a sort of a narrow question, so I don't know if it's 
appropriate. Uh, I'm a property owner in Las Posas uh, area, and uh, having read the LPUG, uh, at least my understanding of the initial allocation proposal, it was based on an average of five-year usage from 2009 to 2014. Is that correct? Nine through 13, yes. Nine through 13, okay. Um, so we have a very specific issue with our property. It may apply to some others, but our land was fallow for a couple of those years, and so basically no water usage, and then we started ramping up with our production. So with, with that formula, we would be severely penalized mm -hmm. looking at an average. So I was just wondering if there was any provision for that type of situation in coming up with uh, the initial allocation amounts. Sure, uh, it's a great question, and uh, no matter um, what base period you pick to, to serve as a starting point for allocating water, there'll be people that are caught in transition one way or another. So an important component of the allocation plan will be a robust variance process so that the GMA will go through a process where they consider those unique circumstances and have the opportunity to make adjustments. So that'll be an important part of that. Again, any more speaker slips? Oh, I have a speaker slip. Did you need a speaker slip? Okay, I'll get you one. So, uh, Nina Danza, can you cut up, please? Thank you very much. <clears throat> I'm a representative of the Ventura Sierra Club, and uh, I'm going to limit my um, scope or my vision of this groundwater management plan st uh, strictly to the east end. Uh, well, I guess it would be a, for the Fox Canyon um, groundwater basin would be the west end, would be along the Santa Clara River. And one of my questions is if the plan is going to contain um, policy or principles for stormwater conservation on uh, the Santa Clara River in simple terms. I'm not a, a hydrogeologist, but it, that's your, your groundwater recharge water if I'm not mistaken, and we are talking about, as you mentioned, uh, the Oxnard Forbay, I think, and the, the Piru Basin are the two severely overdrawn um, groundwater basins that receive, uh, you know, recharge from the Santa Clara River exclusively, if not, I mean, that, there isn't any other water out there. So I think it's really, really crucial for this groundwater uh, sustainability plan to contain policies and principles for stormwater projects. Um, I'm all in favor, and I, I'm pretty sure most people would like to see these multi-benefit stormwater projects that do groundwater recharge, habitat enhancement, recreation, education, the whole nine yards. Um, what uh, part of that can be incorporated into this plan? Um, that's that would be you know something I'd like to to look into. Um, other than that. Uh, the, my main concern is for protection and sustainability of the, the Santa Clara River and how can that tie into uh, this groundwater management plan. Thank you. Are you ready? Uh, Dina Ontiveres. Good evening. Thank you uh, for allowing me to be here. Um, so I'm the president of the Nyland Acres Mutual Water Company. We're, uh, we have two small water companies, Garden Acres and Mutual, on uh, the Nyland Acres. And it is a disadvantaged community. Um, not every person who uses this groundwater lives within city limits. A lot of people live within county limits and don't want to live in a city. Um, we do have uh, poultry users, horse users. <coughs> And I'm sure there are other small mutual water companies. Many of these mutual water companies don't have full-time staff. They have very small um, technical staff, part-time people who work maybe five hours a week. Um, a huge amount of difficulty obtaining technical managerial financial assistance. We have water flow issues. Um, and then we're impacted by the large landowners who pump for their businesses, and I'm afraid that at some point in time that our households won't be able to access clean drinking water. 
Um, I already read some of the lab reports and were affected just a tiny bit by seawater intrusion. The ions are a little bit high. So there's a lot of pumping going on. I'd like to see some more conservation, but most of the pumping is done by ag and um, it's affecting our drinking water. It's affecting our ability to live. Um, so I'd like to see a little bit more input from not just my mutual water company because I try really hard to participate, but I work full time and have a family. And I know a lot of the other mutual water companies, they don't have time or they don't know that these meetings exist. Um, and a lot of the people that live in these communities are people of color, people who actually work in the fields, they're picking the crops and I don't hear their voice. Um, their high nitrate level levels in some of these places. And it's not really because of sewer, it's really because of the fertilizer levels. And this is affecting our drinking water. So I'd like to see those issues addressed and to have more input from community that's not just people who work professionally dealing with water, but people who actually drink the water and use the water to bathe and that live in this area. Because I live there. I live in a disadvantaged community. And my neighbors, a lot of them only speak Spanish. Some of them only speak Mixteco. And so I don't really see that type of person in this room. So it would be nice to have more inclusion. Thank you. Thank you. So we did uh, provide materials in Spanish. Uh, we did provide all materials media-wise in Spanish press release. We have Rafaela in the back of the room, and there's also Spanish-speaking materials. I'd be really happy to talk to you after to see how we can bring uh, more of the, the DAC community into the conversation. We did have a dialogue with Cause um, about some of these issues, and there is obviously the human right to water. Um, law that we're all addressing uh, and that requires everybody to have a right to water regardless and that was largely out of the uh, environmental justice community that that legislation was passed. Um, did any of the panelists want to speak to any of those issues? Um, well thanks and, and yeah your input in helping to get out to those communities will be really important. I did actually want to, um, we didn't have a chance to address the previous yeah, speaker's um, comments about stormwater capture and uh, and certainly that is really important uh, That and uh, that's something that United Water Conservation District has been doing for a long time. Um, the Sigma law and the groundwater sustainability plan development are going to be looking for all opportunities to uh, capture more water. There is no such thing as waste water, or uh, it's just unrealized uh, resources that we haven't realized. So um, that's going to be a very, there's going to be a, quite an effort on that. Things like the water market effort that will help to um, quantify the cost of water will ultimately pr potentially be able to provide the ability to get financing and funding uh, to build some of the types of uh, projects that we might like to, to build it that there isn't funding for right now. But yeah, so I'd like to assure the speaker and everyone that that is something that will, um, will everybody will be looking at very closely. My name is John Matthews. I'm general counsel of the Pleasant Valley County Water District. Our water district straddles uh, both the Oxnard Basin and the PV Basin. And I first want to uh, uh, add my comments to, to Jurgen's and my support of Jurgen's uh, position on this. Um, one of the things that I'd like to have answered tonight, maybe by GMA staff, is uh, setting up this uh, charter organization or this charter group. Could you explain your methodology on how you're going to do that? As Jurgen has explained, other than NGOs, um, the agricultural portion of those two basins, about a little over 80 percent of the people have participated. And that's not just shown up. They've dug into their genes and they've paid money so we could hire a hydrologist and legal counsel. And so I'd like to know how you plan on doing that, how that organization would be staffed, and secondly, I know you, the LPA group has been lucky to have Brian Bondi 
and uh, Callegas, who've been able to fund some of this. We haven't had the same luxury. We've had to go out to individual farmers and have the cities help us also. Um, would there be funds available from the GMA uh, to help defray those costs of uh, the hydrogeologists we've hired and the legal counsel? Well, this stakeholder group is not, um, th this is not an effort to develop a technical resource that will work um, in addition to our consulting team. This is something, uh, the Sigma regulations require an outreach, and this is something we desire as well to get uh, everybody to have an opportunity to put a voice into development of the GSP. So this, this uh, group, which hopefully you'll participate in as well and have a voice in everybody within those basins who has a, is an interested party um, to have a vehicle to, to uh, comment on the GSP development and, uh, and provide their input that can be considered by the um, technical group putting together the consultants, putting together the, uh, the GSP, and ultimately the GMA board who will be making the difficult decisions during uh, uh, the latter parts of uh, the GSP development. Can I follow up on that just please? Okay. But, but use the mic. Yeah, I'll use the mic. That's why I'm offering that. Um, I, I understand that. I guess my question is, Will you put a notice out, just say we're forming this group, there's nobody on it, anybody that wants to come on it or join it comes in? Because with our group, I think everybody we have would want to be, want, want to be part of that, as opposed to um, going out and saying we'd like you, 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 and to serve, serve on this group. We will publicly notice the formation of it. And uh, it will be all the, the other um, charter groups do meet under a Brown Act. So there are uh, publicly noticed 72 hours or more ahead. They're, uh, they're open door. And so uh, every, anybody who can, uh, wants to attend can come. And that's the way this will be formed and operated. The next speaker is Jim Danza. Sorry, Nina, for skipping over your, your question. Are there any more speaker slips? Hi, I'm Jim Danza with Friends of the Santa Clara River. And I want to tie also the stormwater issues with the water supply issues, the, the groundwater. Um, we have two problems, um, not enough water and too much uh, at the same time. When it does rain, um, obviously, we. The flood control um, approach tends to be to get rid of the water, and that's how a lot of our systems are designed. And the cities are a great catchment, right? Because it's so much impermeable surfaces, um, that becomes a problem. And um, I know for a fact Cayugas Creek has um, sections and Caneo Creek have sections that are showing higher peak flows during storms from all the runoff from uh, Simi Valley. So again, it's too much water uh, at once, um, so I think the approach needs to be looking at how to capture that water. And more importantly, with climate change, all the predictions um, from, from NOAA is, n not N-O-A-H, uh, National Weather <laughs> Service, <laughs> um, is, is that the, the storms will be much worse and produce a lot more water quickly and also longer and prolonged droughts, which we're already experiencing. So any solutions that are looked at for more water uh, definitely needs to take that into account. Thanks. Our next speaker is uh, Sharon Bushman. I'm just a regular citizen and I have some questions. I noticed that um, you don't cover uh, all of Ventura County. So I'm wondering how you work with, I assume there are other groundwater basin groups. And um, are they the ones, well, whoever they are, could you tell us, <laughs> who's going to develop the groundwater plans for sustainability plans for those areas, like uh, Thousand Oaks and Santa Paula and Ojai? Um, and do these groundwater basins have an effect on the Fox Canyon, uh, your group, 
and are you working in conjunction with them? And are you going to have an allocation plan before 2042? I hope. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, I'll take a shot at some of those questions. There are other groups organizing to form groundwater sustainability agencies for the other basins. So there's a group organizing in the Mound Basin, which basically is the city of Ventura area. There's also a group organizing to cover the Fillmore and Piru basins, which large, lie largely under those uh, cities. And they're sort of centrally located in those two basins. The Santa Paula Basin is largely exempt from Sigma because it's adjudicated. So it's under its own separate uh, court-appointed uh, set of rules and regulations that go with that. So it's largely exempt from the uh, Sigma efforts. Ojai has its own groundwater management agency there. Say again, I didn't hear you. Um, the, the basins along the Santa Clara River, for example, Piru, Fillmore, Santa Paula, Mound, um, are going to have to work together. That's part of the Sigma process where you have to develop coordination plans between the basins so that um, everybody understands what their upstream neighbor and their downstream neighbor are doing with respect to groundwater and water resources in general. Mm -hmm. So that is a requirement of Sigma. So you're going to have to coordinate and cooperate. And I would add that um, the, the GSAs are only forming at, on those basins that have been identified by the state as higher medium priority or critically overdrafted. So there are a few that are, have not been designated that way and are not required to uh, form a groundwater sustainability plan. Uh oh. They told us we might feed back a little bit. Is that better? And um, um, I'll also point out that within the Fox Canyon uh, GMA, uh, three of the basins are uh, largely uh, just going to be Fox Canyon, but the Arroyo Santa Rosa Basin, uh, Fox Canyon um, only overlies the western third of it, and for the eastern two-thirds, a uh, Arroyo Santa Rosa Basin GSA has formed, and uh, uh, they will be in the process of doing this as well, and we'll have to work very closely with them with coordination agreement. But I will say that um, because uh, Fox Canyon was already formed as a GMA and has been managing water, groundwater for 30 plus years. Uh, we were uh, well ahead of most of the other areas. It was, um, it, it gave us a head start. So I think we're way ahead of everybody else. Uh, Ojai Basin is also a GMA, legislatively formed, and, and they're, uh, um, I'm not quite sure where they're at as well, but they're probably ahead of the others as well. So, um, uh, you know, what you, I would highly encourage you if you're not within Fox Canyon, find out what basin you're in. Find out if it's one that's uh, overdraft. You can go to the one of these links, the DWR link, and look, and it'll show you whether you're a, a higher medium priority basin. And then uh, there are GSAs forming to cover all of those within the county, and then uh, you know plug into that effort. So our next speaker is Steve Hickox, followed by Robert Aranio. Hi, thank you. Um, to compliment John's comments, um, I'll try to keep the acronyms to a minimum, but I don't think that can happen. If the state is requiring the GSA to implement a GSP and require stakeholder involvement, there's a cost for that. And the stakeholder involvement comes at the cost to the stakeholder. The GSA has the right to impose penalties to cover that cost. The stakeholders do not. So I think what John was referring to, if I'm not mistaken, was that some of those costs can be trickled down from the GSA to cover the cost for stakeholder involvement. For example, it cost us a little bit of money to have a, an attorney here tonight or to have meetings bi-weekly to provide input, it comes at a cost. We can't capture that cost. But the GSA can through penalties. And I think what John was referring to was, can we get those costs recaptured back from GSA?
Well, I would certainly recommend that, uh, you know, if you have that kind of question that you come to the Foxkey and GMA board meeting and uh, and address those those kind of questions to the board. Good evening, Robert Aranio. I represent several small mutuals located in the Oxnard Forebay. There are also disadvantaged communities. I hear that the city of Oxnard and the city of Camarillo have been meeting on the Pleasant Valley and Oxnard Plain to represent municipal interest in order to try and figure out an allocation plan and how much water that they can deal with. Are they also by default representing the small mutuals that are located in the Oxnard Forebay that is not part of the Oxnard Plain? Who is the representative for the uh, mutuals in the unincorporated areas, uh, whether they're disadvantaged or not, and how do we uh, possibly get our concerns so that we're all on the same page when the municipal, which what we're listed as also, comes forward to the GMA with an allocation plan? Well, I think those are the, the kind of uh, questions that you could bring to the, uh, the group that's forming. Now, the allocation groups that are working within the Oxnard uh, Plain and, and uh, Pleasant Valley are working. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're doing a lot of work that will be useful, but they're not officially sanctioned by the GMA. They're working their local groups. Um, either the agriculturalists who have come together and working together or the municipalities and they're working outside um, the, uh, the GMA's uh, outside the GMA I guess I should say that's not something that that we have formed and uh, they are they've come together and they're working together so I, I would address um, those groups and find out how you can participate if you want to participate in those groups or, um, or else there will be this new uh, group farming to provide an opportunity for uh, putting input into the GSPs. Are there any more speaker slips or comments? We do have representation of mutuals at the uh, Oxnard Pleasant Valley uh, landowners meeting. Carol Schoen is representing um, Alta Mutual, and um, Neil McGuire is representing uh, Del Norte. So we have that representation involved. Are there any other questions or comments that you'd like to capture? Do you have a speaker slip that? We'll just capture that. You used it. You used it. <laughs> okay. So I'll let you, I'll give you the microphone, and if you want, I'll get you another one. Okay. Earlier, there's a question. I don't know if I heard the answer to it. My name is Tom Deardorff. It was, uh, is there going to be an allocation plan by 2042? So my question was, in furtherance of that, what is the timeline? And are you planning to take full advantage of the legislative um, timelines where we have until 2020 and we have to 2042. Are we going to have a glide path or are you guys anticipating a hard 20-30% cut on an allocation plan and, and that's going to be a hard deadline? So what are the timelines? When do you expect TAG to be done in, in setting our um, some of the technical requirements and then when are the allocation plans supposed to be done and are we going to take advantage of these glide path opportunities with the legislation? So that's a, a great question. The, uh, the Foxy and GMA board has been very aggressive in its schedule in trying to complete the GSPs, and there's one for each uh, basin. And the uh, the goal at this point is to uh, try and uh, make a uh, a late May to get a, a draft. We'll see um, if we can achieve that, and then so we're trying to. The board has made clear that they want to move forward quickly on that. And so in terms of what the uh, allocations will be, we don't know. That's being worked out still. And what, you know, wh how much the, uh, the sustainable yield's going to be, that's all, being, that's all work that's being conducted right now. Are there any other public speaker cards or comments at this time? OK, so this is an open process. Um, you will be receiving 
emails. I encourage you to forward these emails on. And if there are people here that you think need to be included into the stakeholder process, please provide uh, their emails uh, to us. I know that we have made use of the IRWM process in Ventura County and WCVC's work. Uh, we have also, and Lynn, maybe you can stand up just to wave your hand. Uh, Lynn is with WCVC, um, and that is the Watershed Groups and IRWM. Uh, clearly, we would like to continue uh, dialoguing, and we'd like to continue to ensure that people are outreach to. So um, as you need more information, please contact us. We are also putting together a public and stakeholder outreach plan that's in development now, and we will keep you apprised of that process. It will be also available on the Fox Management Groundwater Management Agency website. And uh, we encourage you to please stay involved. You will be getting monthly emails uh, of work summary. And if there's any appetite, I'm sure the panelists would be happy to, to break out and talk to each and every one of you, uh, not at great length, um, but certainly their contact information, as I said, will be in a live link in an email. Um, so thank you very much for your time. Appreciate you taking the time to come out here on a Tuesday evening, your precious hours after work. Uh, and we'll be in touch very soon. Thank you all. Thanks again, everybody. So, um, how did you learn about the meeting? Yeah. Yes. Vanessa Terran, she works for um, MICOP, the Mixteco Indigenous Community something something. And so I just sent her a text saying, hey, are you on the Mixteco radio? I don't know, she, she may answer me tomorrow, but it, it would be the radio for the yeah, Spanish speaking no, no, audience. I know, I know the radio. Yeah, no, I the best. all of that. I work in Santa Barbara County, and so for all the farm workshops that we put together, um, it's always led in Mixteca and Spanish. And it's Advertised for Radio Bronco and you know, between the obvious So, well aware of that. Uh, we didn't take care of that end of it, but our county did. Oh, they, they're terrible. Okay. They're well, terrible. That's, I, mean, that's, I work for the county. Yeah. I know. They're yeah. terrible. The, the, so, they, they, so, that's not the case. Well. They have a county has a uh, PR firm that they're using. Well, so. they're terrible. Because you know what? I do my own PR for my own things that I do as the Fall Prevention Program Coordinator, and I had the biggest. Turnout. I had the biggest turnout.